Okay, we begin a new study today on the Ten Commandments. Finish the full study. Now, an interesting thing about the Ten Commandments, and this is an introduction, so we're not going to get right into the Ten Commandments, but let's look at Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20. We'll look at some fun things of the Bible and religion. Because we want to have the truth. In Exodus 20 verse 1. And God spake all these words saying. So the first thing we see about the Ten Commandments. Were they were not written down. Until later. The very first time the Ten Commandments. They were spoken orally. And they were written twice. We'll get into that. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Number one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two, verse four, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I am the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. Visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. We're not gonna look at it, but that second commandment is people who hate God. We'll get into it. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Number three, thou shalt not take the Name the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh the name in vain. Number four, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy man, man servant, thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that are therein, and rested in the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day, and hallowed it. Number five, honor thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth it. Uh, number six, thou shalt not kill. Number seven. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Number eight, thou shalt not steal. Number nine, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Number ten, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife and his maidservant, and his maidservant, nor his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor. And the people saw thunders and lightning. Okay, one other place, Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5. And this is the kind of, we have a, a, a lesson on the biblical truth of our hymns. Well, this is the biblical truth about the Ten Commandments. What the Bible says, not what I say, it's what God says. That has been misinterpreted, has been uh, made vile, has been added, subtracted, and we'll see what the Bible says about these. How about that? Deuteronomy chapter 5. Oh, right down verse number. Verse number 6. 5 6. Deuteronomy. I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Number 1. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two, thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness of anything that's in the heaven above or that's in the, in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. For that, thou shalt not bow thyself unto them nor serve them. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God. Visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children <clears throat> unto the third and fourth generation them that hate me. That's God speaking. And shown mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Number three, 
Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Number four, keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it. The Lord thy God has commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God. In that thou shalt not do any work thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy men servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy ox, nor thy ass, nor anything of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thou man servant and maid servant may rest all as well as thou. And remember that it was, and remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt, and the, the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Number five, honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord God has commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged that it may be do may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Number six, thou shalt not kill. Number seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. Number eight, thou shalt not steal. Number nine, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Number ten, neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife, neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor. Now, Exodus is the beginning of the nation coming out of Exodus. Deuteronomy is, is the second giving of the law to the people of Israel that are going to go into the land after Moses dies, being led in by Joshua. Okay, that's fine and good for the Old Testament. But the Christian is not under law, is he? So let's go to Romans chapter 13. Now, I am not one that I have been accused of. I am not one that Paul only is. I believe all 66 books of the Bible and only the 66 books of the Bible. Okay? But Paul is the Gentile apostle given to, to the Gentiles, though he had a great work for the Jewish people, hated by the Jewish people. Paul was the church planter, the, the church starter all over Asia. Paul writes to the Gentile church. So we're going to look at the church and what the church should be and not should be. We don't go running to Matthew, which is a Jewish book. We run to the Apostle Paul, the Gentiles, to find in chapter 13 of Romans verse 9, for this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, we'll get all into this, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Did you know Paul has ten commandments listed in his, his writings? Ten Commandments that don't contain all the Ten Commandments are found in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5. And we'll find out. You know, Stay tuned, whatever you want to say, as we go through these lessons. And I have a total of, let's see, just to get you going, 12 lessons. Nope, 13. 13 lessons. Hopefully it won't be more. But introduction to the Ten Commandments, there they are, according to the King James Bible. I'm not going to waste my time with the modern Bible. But I am going to show you something that's introduction of religion. And I have here Luther's Small Catechism, the official book, the handbook of the Christian doctrine, is... St. Louis, Missouri, Cordoya Publishing House. Copyright 1943. And this would be not the main catechism of the Luther, but this small catechism. Hitting all the, you know, hitting all the, the main frame. 
So let's read section one, the Ten Commandments, page five, and we're going to read to page number. Uh, we'll just read it to page seven of this book. Okay, first commandment. Luther, Martin Luther's book, Martin Luther's Church. Section one is called the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What does this mean? We shall fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Okay. Second commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. What does this mean? We should fear and love God that we may not curse, swear, use witchcraft, lies, to see by his name, but call upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. I know how it says witchcraft there. It's funny because there are Christian magicians out there. I'll give the Luther Catechism one benefit great. Amen. The third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God that we may not despise preaching his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. Very good. So we go to church on the first day of the week. The fourth commandment. Thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. What does this mean? We shall fear and love God that we may not despise our parents, but masters, not prolong, provoke them to anger, but give them honor, serve, and obey them, and hold them in love and esteem. The fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill. And I'm, I'm not going to read the other parts anymore. The sixth commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. The seventh commandment, thou shalt not steal. The eighth commandment, thou shalt not bear fault with it against thy neighbor. The ninth commandment, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. The tenth commandment, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his maidservant, nor his maidservant, nor his cattle, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Okay, we're going to go back to the King James Bible here for a moment. Something's wrong. Okay. Exodus 20. We'll go to where the commandments first show up. Exodus 20. And let's break this down. Let's find out. Okay. The first commandment, Luther says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay, first commandment, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Correct. Second commandment, Luther, Thou shalt not take the Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Second commandment, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that's in the earth beneath. Something's wrong. Something happened. The third commandment. Keep, remember the Sabbath day and keep it safe. Uh, keep it holy. Commandment number three. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You, you say, Stalin, you got that complex, weird look on your face. Fifth, fourth commandment. Fourth commandment in the Bible. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Fourth commandment for them. Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. That it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long and near. Fifth commandment. Thou shalt not kill. Fifth commandment. By my notes here. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land. Luther says earth. The Bible speaking to the Jewish people to a promised land given to them. Says land, not earth. That's problem number many. <laughs> All right, so honor thy father and mother. They say the fourth, fifth commandment: Thou shalt not kill. Fifth, okay, fifth commandment: Honor thy father and mother. Sixth commandment: Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, sixth, thou shalt not kill. Seventh, thou shalt not steal. Seventh, thou shalt not commit adultery. Eight, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Eight, thou shalt not steal. Nine, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Nine, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Ten, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not 
uh, covers maid service, maid service, cattle, and anything that's thy neighbor's. Ten. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, thou shalt not cover his servant, his maid servant, his axe, his ass, or anything that's our neighbor. We got a problem with Luther and his catechism of his church. Let's look at it again real quick. First commandment, first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Luther, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Second commandment. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or likeness anything in heaven or above or beneath. Second commandment, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Luther's, Lutheran, have removed from the Ten Commandments in their catechism. Let me get that show up there. Ah, can't get it. Luther's catechism. We're using this for educational and, and the, the, the means of study, fair use copyright law, and they have removed the commandment, the second commandment, that thou shalt not have any graven images. And I wonder why. Why would they have in a statue, image, an idolatry organization, why would they remove the second commandment? And that God says in that command, we're not going to get into it now, but those people involved in idolatry hate me. And the Lutherans have removed out of their catechism, though this is just a, a brief, uh, a bridge. And they removed the second commandment. So if you were to go to a store somewhere where they sell religious things, and you were to see on the shelf or on the wall a plaque with the Ten Commandments, you got to be careful. Because that plaque may not contain the, the Second Commandment. And so what happened here? What happened? How did they get ten taken one away? Man, the Ninth Commandment, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Well, in Exodus 21, the ninth commandment, thou shalt not bear false witness. Number 10, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, thou in his maid servant, his maid servant, cattle, or anything that's thy neighbor. The King James Bible, the 10th commandment, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover his neighbor's wife. They broke number 10 into two, so we get rid of number two. Now, is that not slick? We still got the 10. We took away one, but we broke one in half. So you got ten chocolate chip cookies on the table. Your son steals a cookie and eats it, and he takes number ten, he breaks it in half, and he puts it on the counter like nobody's supposed to notice. Something's missing. And they put this under your nose. If you're a Lutheran, your church catechism is against the Ten Commandments. You heard that here. You're not going to hear that from your Lutheran church. All right. We got the catechism of the Roman Catholic Church. Whoa. Can't leave them alone, can you? The image book, Doubleday. Imperi Potest. It can't be, uh, I'm trying to say, Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger. In other words, this book I hold in my hand has been certified, has been accepted, and has been proved by this man of authority in the Catholic Church. You cannot question this book whether you're a Catholic or you're not a Catholic. This has been approved by the Catholic Church, by their hierarchy. So let's look at what they say about the Ten Commandments. And lo and behold, they hold on this page, 551, they have Exodus 22 through 17. They have Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 21, and we went through that. And they... Give first, second, third, 
commandment. In Exodus 20, verse 2 through 17, they give all 20 commandments properly. I'm not going to read the scripture, it's probably wrong. Catholic Church don't have the King James Bible. Deuteronomy 5, 6 to 21, they have all the listed 10 commandments. And this is this is not according to scripture, they just briefly give it. Okay? That's column 1 is Exodus 20, column 2 is Deuteronomy 5, and they're going to spell it out for you if you open your eyes and you read English or press 1. And if you fall for this nonsense as a Catholic in your own catechism, you are stupid in your own stupidity that they have it in their catechism. What's wrong? You're getting angry. You better believe I'm getting angry. I grew up as a Roman Catholic for most of my life. Young, I have seen Catholic family probably go off into hell. It's part of my Catholic family. I'm not sure. And I knew there's Catholics who came out of the Catholic Church there was saying. Now the third column says a traditional catechetical formula. The church follows tradition over the Bible, and Jesus Christ said that's wrong in the gospel. So traditionally, though they list the Ten Commandments and the Scripture, which could be wrong. Okay, let's look at this. The traditional. All right, Exodus 20 says, I am the Lord your God. I'm going to read out a catechism, so forgive me. I am the Lord that God which brought the brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You're on me. Uh, I said, I am the Lord your God which brought you out of Egypt. And then tradition number one, I am the Lord your God. You shall not have no strange gods before me. Number two. You shall have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that's in the heaven above the earth. Okay. Deuteronomy, you shall have no other gods before me. Tradition, big blank space. Third commandment in the Bible, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Okay. Deuteronomy, you shall not take the name of the Lord God in vain. Number two, tradition, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. The Protestants did it, and the Catholics have done it. Something about those organizations, they want you to be happy with images and idolatry, because, gee, you walk into them and you see statues and groves and idolatry and their commandments, though they tell you the Bible says it is against. Our tradition says there is no commandment against it. Now I'm going to tell you something right now. Luther's catechism, this one right here, I don't know what the full one says. All right, they just put it up. You can be fooled by the catechism of Luther unless you read your Bible. But the Catholic Church has put what the Bible says. And then they give you tradition and they'll teach you, well, that's what the Bible said. But listen to your priest, your Pope, and your Cardinals, honey. Because we're so smarter than God. <laughs> and you can quote me on that. Okay? You can take your tradition of the Catholic Church and put it into hell. How dare you change the word of God and proclaim to be the one universal church. You're the one universal harlot. Sleeping with Satan. I'm talking about the organization of the, I'm not talking about Catholics. I'm talking about the hierarchy. The organization called Catholic. All right, so let's get back down here. So, let me find our place here. Okay, they put here, you should not covet your neighbor's house, you should not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or his maidservant, or his axe, is that, okay? Deuteronomy, 
Neither shall ye covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not desire anything. So in Deuteronomy, they broke it apart. They changed Deuteronomy. But look at tradition. Ready? Number nine. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. But they can cover your little boys. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Number nine. Number ten. You shall not cover your neighbor's goods. You see, they did the same thing that Lutherans did. We removed number two because we're guilty of it. And we split number ten into two, so we still have ten. Isn't that that common math that they are rejecting in the schools today? So the Ten Commandments of the Lutherans, I read it to you, out of the Roman Catholic Church, I read it to you, or Catholic Church, that's Catholic, not Roman. Here it is. No strange gods before me. The name of the Lord, Sabbath, parents, kill, adultery, Steal, false witness, cover thy neighbor's wife, cover thy neighbor's goods. Nothing, nothing about. There's an omission. Let's look at Deuteronomy 4 too. Would you appreciate somebody change your Bible? They have. The Ten Commandments is Bible doctrine written in the Bible that has been subtracted there are nine cookies on the counter and one has been broken in half uh yeah it looks like 10 to me wake up i hope you're not in charge of a business because that kind of math will make you fail go under Oh, that's the math the government's using today. The government doesn't have money, but yet it writes more checks. Deuteronomy 4 2. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish, subtract, or from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. I wonder what the modern Bibles of the catechisms of the Catholic and the Lutheran Church say about that verse. You can't ask their tradition because their tradition say, yeah, we can change the Bible if it disagrees with our elders. God is not the final authority in the Lutheran Church and the Catholic Church if they take what God's written and get the big racer. Remember that big pink racer? Big mistakes. And they race it out of there. Man, they're going to be sorry when they stand before God at the great white throne judgment. But we're not done. Proverbs 30. This is an Introduction. It gets better. Proverbs 30, verse 6. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Oh. Liar. Liar. Your church is built on hellfire because it does not agree with the Bible. King James. You need to get out, get in a Bible believing church, get under the true gospel of Jesus Christ alone without any works for salvation. And the church has a modern Bible, doesn't have King James, you get out of that church. Yeah, I am what you call King James only. God has one God, one Savior, one Jesus, one church, one spirit, one baptism, but he had 430,000 quadrillion Bibles. 
That the modern Bibles today that they're rewriting it. God doesn't know the difference between a male and a female. When he made them male and female. Great introduction. You know, I've always used the illustration as. And maybe this is a poor, gener poor illustration for this generation. But the older people know. You're out in, in a battlefield somewhere. It's World War II, it's Vietnam, it's Korea. You're overseas and you're fighting our, our, our enemy. You're standing firm for your family and for your country and your family's back home. And in the foxhole somewhere, you're writing a letter on the, on the decks of a ship or in an airplane. And you mail that letter off. And when that letter gets to your loved one, whether from America to the overseas or overseas to America or whatever country you're in, and they open up that letter and there's scribble outs. And there are, there are paper missing. It's been cut out. You don't get the full of that letter that was written because it has been altered. And yet in wartime, it was right because you may give sensitive information. If a soldier would accidentally write, well, I'm in this place. <clears throat> well, if the enemy got a hold of that letter, they could use it against our soldier. So you can't, they would cross that out. For the good of the military personnel in our country, certain things were cut out and blanked out and blacked out out of letters. Home and abroad. That's not the case with the Bible. And the Bible has been edited that Jesus has been changed. Joshua has been changed. The blood has been removed. The Ethiopian eunuch did not believe on Jesus Christ, but was just baptized. And over and over and over, the Bible has been changed by man, by tradition, and God has written in the scriptures, don't you dare do it, because you will be the liar. And according to the scriptures of Proverbs 30, I'm going by the scriptures, I am quoting the scriptures, open the Bible, add thou not unto his words, least he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar, when you have changed the word of God, And you have added and subtracted. According to the Bible, you are the liar. I didn't say that. The Bible did. You have subtracted the second commandment. And you have added to the tenth commandment to make it two. And you as a congregational member of these people are sitting at a counter looking at Nine, you're looking at eight cookies and one broken in half, and you say, that's ten. Don't make change at the supermarket. That's the introduction to the Ten Commandments. You got hostile. You offended me. I hope I did. I hope I offend you right out of hell and into glory through Jesus Christ. You can get right. You can get out of the tradition. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. You can believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Savior. And it's only by Jesus Christ and not of works are we saved. And you can read your own Bible and you can study the Bible. And I know a Roman Catholic that read the Bible daily and found the errors of the church that he was in and got into a Baptist church and got truly saved and got serving the Lord right. The best enemy of the Lutherans and the Catholic Church is the King James Bible. Call no man your father. 
Check out Jeremiah when it talks about the queen of heaven and wafers. Or cakes, as the Bible says. Changed the word, didn't you? Check out Judges when you see the, the Catholic Church Assembly long before Jesus Christ was ever born. With stolen money that made, made an image or an idol. And the guy hired his own priest, which the priest called the guy, I mean, the guy called the priest father. The church, the Catholic Church is founded upon Jesus Christ. No, I can find it in the book of Judges. Because I've read and studied the Bible. The Bible says, God says, study and show thyself approved unto, unto uh, study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. I dare you, church attender. I dare you, someone who proclaims to be a member of a church and doesn't go to church. I dare you, whoever you are, I dare you, with the power and prayer of God, you get in the Bible and you start reading. Start off with the Gospel of John. Read one chapter once a day. Not two chapters. Every day, read one chapter Start in the Gospel of John with prayer. Looking for God to do something for you. I'm just, out of the scriptures. Out of the scriptures. I didn't tell you any of my armpits. It's armpits. My opinion. You see, my opinions stink. And I will tell you, and people who have heard me, I will tell you if it's my opinion and that you can throw it in the garbage can. If I'm going to say something that I think, I will tell you, I think, and you don't have to believe what I think. But if I quote out the scriptures, now the Bible says, sanctify through thy truth, thy word is true. Not tradition. And Jesus said, you hold the tradition above the word of God. And you've sinned. And you've sinned. 